Hey, hey, everybody, and welcome back to the board meeting. Today, we're going to be talking about one of my favorite games of all time. We're talking about Pandemic, but we're not talking about the base game today. We are talking about all three of the expansions that have come out for Pandemic since then. In the last few days, I have been playing a ton of Pandemic. I've been playing through all of the stuff that comes in all of these three different expansions so, so that I can talk about it. And what's really funny, I've played Pandemic a lot. I haven't explored the expansions as much, even though I've had them and I've brought the characters to my base game, but I haven't explored like the, the modular expansion part of these, which these three expansions, they're more modular sets. You know, they come with three or four different variants in each of them that you can just play as. They're not like a one, one little expansion thing that comes. There's, it's a modular expansion for all three of them. So let's get into this. I'll talk about them, talk about my feelings, and at the end I'll talk about which ones are my favorite and which orders I would buy them in. So first we'll talk about the first one is Pandemic on the Brink. This one came out 2009, I believe, shortly after a regular Pandemic came out. And what this one offers and brings to the table, it adds a fifth player mode, it add, or fifth player option. It adds, I think, seven new roll cards, which can be added and played with all of the regular stuff except for the bioterror terrorist role which i'll get into that one later um it adds new event cards it adds a legendary mode where you can play have a seventh epidemic card i don't need the seventh epidemic card i don't need the sixth ep the epidemic card for most of the time uh it adds petri dishes for the diseases to hold the diseases in which are probably my favorite component in any of the expansions Putting these diseases in the Petri dishes, I think it looks really cool. It's thematic, it's fun, and it's a good storage device. Um, this this expansion comes with three different variants, that, and they're, they're all called challenges in these expansions. Three different challenges that you can play, plug-and-play sort of nature for these. The first one is the Virulent Strain Challenge, which sort of gives one of the diseases almost like a, an ability. And you're going to pull out these Vibrant Strain cards, which which are part of the epidemics, that are going to give one particular disease like a new way that it acts, a new way that you have to defeat it, a new way that it's it's just going to be like a, a super disease compared to the other ones. It's the it's the viral strain, and it's it's a fun one to play. It's very easy to add that one in. You just add replace the old epidemic cards with these ones. Very easy to add in. Uh, the next one is the mutation challenge, which adds the fifth disease, the purple disease, which all of the other expansions use the purple diseases. Or all the, the other expansions have some kind of fifth purple disease modular thing that comes in it. I, I really like the mutation challenge. I really like having the fifth disease. If the game's a little bit too easy for you, you add a fifth disease, that fifth purple disease, and it just adds a little bit more difficulty to the game, which I like, and it's pretty simple to bring forward. And then the last challenge in this first expansion on the brink is the Bio Terrorist Challenge, which is it makes the game a one versus many sort of game. You're still four, three or four people are still playing Pandemic, but one person is playing as the Bio Terrorist, which he's trying to make you lose basically. And he's going to take turns in between all the other people, and he's going to have a hidden roll card that he's moving around the board, adding different, adding these diseases, basically trying to make you lose the game. And it's an interesting idea for this, but I'm not a fan of this one at all. You know, if I want to play um, a hidden movement game, I'll go play a hidden movement game. I want to play Pandemic. Can, in this game, you're playing Pandemic, but you're also on the side playing this other hidden movement game trying to catch this person. I'm not a fan of this one. This one, I'm not going to be playing it, you know, anymore. So it's not one that I would recommend. But the other two challenges in this box, these variants, are really fun. I really like the characters, the role, the new roles that this adds, the events that this one adds. This one feels very much similar to the base game, especially those characters and those events. It feels like these ones could have very easily been part of the base game. Compared to the other characters in the other expansions, these ones feel, it gives me the vibe of the base box, where the other ones are go a little bit off the trail compared to those ones. 
but I really like the the player roles and the events in this one. I like the mutation challenge. I like the uh, the vir virulent strain challenge. Those are two of my favorite variants out of all of these expansions. They're really good. The bio terrorist one that's a that's a pass for me. So let's go on to the other expansion, the pandemic in the lab expansion. This one came out two thousand. 13 I believe so there's a few years break four years break between the expansions this one adds six new six player roles but two of them are repeats you know reprints I think one of them is from the on the brink expansion one is from the base game and they just tweak the the ability of the the player roles just a little bit there are just three new event cards in this one there is a solo mode card for this which doesn't really make sense to me because I already play this game solo all the time, but I always play it two-handed. I don't need a way to play this game solo, this different way to play it solo. There's all Pandemic is already a good solo game, so I don't really need that. Um, it adds a couple more cards to the Virulent Strain expansion from the previous expansion. So those cards are useless unless you get the first expansion. Um, so you just add those ones and it gives you more options for that Violent Strain challenge. Um, it gives you a new way to play the Mutation challenge in the from the first game. So another one that you need the, the first expansion for. It just changes it just slightly uh, compared to the first one. Now the two, this one comes with two challenges, two variants in it. And the first one, uh, well I'll talk about the one first. The Team versus Team challenge. This you can play as teams versus teams. You can play it uh, two versus two or a two versus two versus two. So you can play up to six players with this team challenge. And you're playing basically the same exact game as you would for regular Pandemic. But you are split off into these two-person teams where you're trying to be the better, you know, scientists discovering cures and stuff like that than the other teams. And at the end of the game, if you all win then you're going to decide who was the best winner by decide, seeing how many points that, that team got for different things that they've accomplished throughout the game. If you lose, if if you lose Pandemic, then everybody loses. Semi-cooperative games just don't work for me. You know, I don't want, I want to play Pandemic as a cooperative game. I don't want to, well, we're, we got to cooperate, but I just got to cooperate a little bit better than you are. And so I'm, that one doesn't really work for me. The, the In the Lab expansion, though, that's the big thing in this game, the big expansion. This adds a whole sideboard for it. And for this one, whenever you cure a disease or treat a disease, that treat that disease comes off the board and goes in one of these Petri dishes on the side. And there's like five Petri dishes. And then if you're in a lab, a research laboratory, you can move these diseases from one Petri dish to the other one. And eventually you'll get it, put it, these on these cards, these strain cards, strand cards. And you're trying to fill up all of the particular diseases that that strand card needs in order to cure the disease. In this one, you only need three cards to cure the disease. But you're using your cards a lot more in this game compared to regular Pandemic. You're using your boards, your cards a lot more to fly across across the, the map to make a lot more research laboratories because you need a lot more because you're only going to be able to do the stuff that's in the lab at research labs. And you're going to have to do stuff in the lab all the time. So you want to put a lot of these research labs across the map and make sure that, you know, you can get to one every turn almost. This one, it's a really fun challenge. In regular pandemic, it feels like you're, you're you know, you're containing some spinning plates that are you're trying to make sure not everything not nothing's going to break or anything you know you know you're trying to contain the disease but you're also trying to get these cards and you're trying to work with other people to get them the cards that they need in this one it still contains that but you add another element to that that petri dish that laboratory part of the the expansion it's that's just more plates that you're having to try to not break in this one and if I think it's really, really hard, but it's really fun. Out of all of the expansions, maybe minus the bioterrorist challenge, this one feels a lot different than base pandemic, where all the other ones, it's like, okay, you add this, which just changes the game a little bit. This one feels like it changes the game a lot compared to those ones. I really, really like it. Will I play it a lot? 
I don't know, but I really enjoy it. I, I'll say that. I do enjoy the In the Lab ex challenge a lot. So yes, uh, that is that expansion, the 2013 In the Lab. Going on to the last expansion, we've got Pandemic State of Emergency, which came out in 2015, so just a couple years after In the Lab. This one adds six new roles again. One of the roles is a repeated role which is a kind of a bummer that they they did these in the expansion where they just reprinted some of them. Um, three of them are have special abilities for certain ex expansions in this. Some of the characters you can only play with some of the variants, the mo modular expansions, which is kind of a bummer for that too. You know, I want to be able to add these to my base game, but these ones are for particular expansions or for particular modulars in the expansion, not even just for this expansion. You have to play that particular module to play them. Um, it comes with uh, seven new events, which is more than the previous one, so I like that. Um, one, one bad thing about this expansion is the back of the cards are a lot darker than the other cards from the previous games. And so when you're adding these cards to the base game, some of these cards that you need to shuffle in you're like, okay, this card is obviously part of this expansion, which is kind of, it's kind of a bummer. It's not a huge bad thing for me, but, you know, I just noticed that. I'm like, ah, that's that's kind of sad. That, that Those stand out so much from the other ones. Um, this one has four challenges in it, four variants in it. The first one is the quarantine variant, which adds these quarantine uh, circular tiles that you're going to be putting on the board. And this... This variant actually just makes the game easier. You, in, for an action, you can put out these these tiles that have two a number on one side, a two on one side, and a one on the other side. When you put those down, the next time that space would get like a cube on it, instead you just flip it over to the one side, and it stops that cube from coming over. And the next time after that, you would just stop it, and that would come off the board completely. And it reminds me of something that happens in Pandemic Iberia, where you're putting out these these purify water tokens in between them. That's kind of what this one feels like. And the, all this all this expansion does, or modular ex does, is make the game easier. So if the, you find the game that it makes a little bit, it's a little bit too hard for you, you add in this, makes it gives you a little bit more wiggle room when it comes to trying to prevent the diseases from breaking out and stuff. So it's the quarantine ex variant. The next one is the emergency events one, which is probably the easiest module to add into this game. It's just a bunch of events that you add into the player deck, and when you draw those, it's going to do bad things. And, you know, you put as many of these in there as epidemic cards, I believe. So if you're playing four, you know, you put in four of these, I believe, five, you put in five, and you draw them, and you're like, okay, we got to do this bad thing. They're not terrible, terrible things, but they are bad things. And it's, like I said, it's probably the easiest ex module expansion to add to out of any of these. Maybe besides the quarantine one is very easy to add into. But yeah, it's it's a fun one. It, it If you want your game to be just a little bit more difficult, add in these emergency events and they'll, they'll kick up some, some differences for you. Uh, going to the next one, the next variant in there is the Superbug Challenge, which again is going to be the fifth disease, the purple disease. It's it's a little bit harder than the original one. In this one, the, the Superbug, the fifth purple disease, is going to come out to the board a lot more often than the other ones. And in this one, you can't just go and cure the purple disease. You can't just treat the disease. You have to build these, these vaccine laboratories. And then these vaccine laboratories are going to get some vaccines out. You have to go to these laboratories, grab some vaccines, and go to the purple cubes and cure them that way. Or treat them that way rather than the original way. And out of all the fifth the fifth disease variants in these boxes, this is probably my favorite way to play it. It adds more complexity than the other the the mutation challenge from the original expansion, but it's it's a fun one. I I, I like it quite a, I actually I would say it's probably about par with the other one, but it adds just a little bit more complexity to it. And going on to the last challenge for this expansion, this is the Hinterlands Challenge. This is going to get you two sideboards that you have to put on the sides of each of the pandemic 
or on the pandemic sides where it adds basically four new spots to the game and these hinterland spots. So you have four more spots that you have to cover in this game. But if you go to these hinterland spots, you can exchange cards a lot more easily than you can with regular pandemic where regular pandemic, you have to be in that particular city, give with another person and you have to give that particular city card to that person. In this one, if you go to the red hinterland spots, you can exchange red cards. They don't have to match the cities. So it adds a little bit of difficulty, but it reels in that difficulty too with the, the free exchanges that you can do in this game compared to regular. So I, I enjoy that. It's just like a little, little difference from base game, pretty easy to add into. And uh, that's, that's all of uh, State of Emergency's expansion. So out of all three of these expansions, which one do I like the most? It's pretty easy for me which one I like the most. It's the On the Brink expansion is the one that I like the best. And then it probably goes to the Pandemic State of Emergency expansion, and then it goes to In the Lab. Even though the In the Lab expansion, the, the Lab challenge itself is probably my favorite challenge out of all of them. I'm not gonna break that one out all, all the time because it adds a lot more complexity than the other ones. That one's a little bit more different to explain to people where all the other modules are pretty easy to add on. You're like, okay, you know how to play Pandemic? The, this is the difference. This one adds quite a bit of difference in this one with that whole lab board. But I, I do like the lab challenge quite a bit, but I don't like the team versus team one. And I don't like the bioterrorist challenge in the first one. So there's, there's basically only two challenges in all of these expansions that I'm like, I'm not gonna play those. I'm not gonna play those anymore because the, there's no need to. But I think they're all three really good expansions but, I mean, I do have my favorites, like I said, On the Brink, then State of Emergency, and then In the Lab. But if if you were only going to get one, I would definitely recommend On the Brink, though, because it feels like it has the most content compared to that, where In the Lab, the reason why it got last is because it basically only adds one challenge mode, that In the Lab challenge, compared to the other ones I feel like adds more content. And each of these are, they're kind of expensive for little expansions. They're, I mean, they're about 30, 40 bucks for each of these expansions, which is pretty close to what the base price for Pandemic is. But if you like Pandemic, get these ones. My favorite thing out of all of these is actually just getting the new player roles, the new events. So it adds just variations to the player roles that I can play as because, I mean, I love the player roles in Pandemic. They're some of my favorite roles in any games. So, yes, that will complete this video. Make sure to comment down below. What are your favorite, what's your favorite expansion? What's your favorite modular in any of the expansions for Pandemic? Or do you just, are you just okay with base Pandemic? Which I'm perfectly fine with just playing base Pandemic. But these just add a little more variant to a game that I already love. So, yep, uh, make sure to comment down below. Uh, I will see you on the next one. Hope you all have an amazing day. Take care.